the Daily Graphic this morning says, Man 26 arrested for abusing son who is three years old. Ghanaian, Ugandan scientists research into COVID-19 drugs. Amidu, eligible as special prosecutor. Supreme Court rules by 5-2 majority decision. Rainstorm destroys Kuko Bila Nasia farms. And two bodies support project to reduce plastic waste. On the front page of the Daily Guide, Supreme Court clears Amidu as Ayariga cries foul. Comes with a photo of Godfred Dami, Martin Amidu, Dominic Ayine, and Mahama Ayariga, uh, the defendants, and of course the, uh, the plaintiffs. Alote sees Atamils. How? Prostitute kills man after sex. And Ghanaian Times. Ten perish in two separate accidents at Brimso, a pump junction. Investigate 533 confirmed COVID-19 cases at Tema Fish Processing Plant. Cameron Dodu urges government. And Kwame Sapoisidu has been explaining. He says that it's possible that one person infected three, three infected another three, that makes nine, nine to 20, uh, 27, and on and on and on. So uh, it cannot be possible that one person affected all 533 that would be quite a Herculean task. Age eligibility suit. Martin Amidu fit for special prosecutor. Supreme Court declares. And uh, on the back page, Mondelez Child Rights International support COVID-19 fight. The business finder this morning says, use of heritage fund for COVID-19. Experts sharply divided. Single window. I comes in Ghana's, is Ghana's best bet, according to Ghana Link. You can withdraw part of your pension funds, says the NPRA. And the Daily Statement, finally, Martin Amidu is qualified. Supreme Court throws out NDC's Ayene over special prosecutor's age. President revokes appointment of Takwa in Shaim MCE and 2020 population census rescheduled. We don't know how many we are now as a country. We only rely on 2010 figures. My guest this morning is Mr. Richard Ahiagba. He's the executive director of the Dankwa Institute. It's a think tank. And also, lawyer Abraham Amalba is the leader of the NDC's legal team and a member of the communication team. Gentlemen, welcome. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Morning, morning to you. How are we? Ah, well. Sir Richard, I like your blue. It's sweet. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank is you. Dankwa inspired? Um, it's you inspired. <laughs> <laughs> Council, how are you? Very well. Just uh, yesterday I had doom so, so it was difficult uh, having a good night's sleep. But we are here to soldier on, mm. nonetheless. We are beginning to get used to some of these things. Some of which things? This doom so, sporadic doom so, and all those things. <laughs> so we are used to some of these uh, things now. Okay. We'll soldier on anyway. I hear you. There's you light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> Did you have doom so too, Richard? Uh, uh, no, I don't know what he, he says. Do so, and his shirt looks well ironed. I'm, uh, I'm very meticulous. <laughs> I iron my things ahead of time. I, I, well, it's good. Because I'm methodical. Mm. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, over the weekend, uh, I iron all my shirts. I okay. know what to wear at which time. Okay. Mm. So and, you may want to... And it's, it's also not because your, your credit <coughs> ran out. Uh, because I didn't have... Uh, but you're giving free credit, so why, how can you credit run out? Oh, Did no, it's 50%. Okay. So no. you have to still buy the other 50. Right. So no, it's not credit run out. Okay, so the we're whole, just checking. The whole area was off. Yeah. I, I, because I didn't have those. Okay. In any case, um, uh, your, your past government visited that havoc on us. So please, mm -hmm. let's not and even... And we solved it before you came in. Mm -hmm. So if let, you are not let, let's, this, not, let's not do and that. And we solved it so before you came in. I, was, I think the last time, I'm not sure. What did we do? What um, did we do to bring this on, uh, among, the, on Ghanaians? Um, ECG announced uh, moving... Your, Oh, hold on. ECG uh, was moving that. some uh, transformers right. uh, from some location. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. know where you stay, but uh, the areas around uh, Tama, the mm -hmm. enclaves mm -hmm. around there, they said we were moving some right. transformers. I'm not sure if that's uh, what okay. uh, he suffered. But I will, I, not, I, I will not, not tell you on TV where I stay and you ask your vigilante <laughs> boys to come and attack me. <laughs> I won't tell you. I'm all about. <laughs> if there's any interest there, I know I can find where you stay. Yeah, but I will, I will aid you to make it easy for you to come and get me. Well, it's better to make it easy no, so no, that no. the struggle no. will, be, will be much less. Your, okay. boys, your boys are all over there. Richard, the <laughs> yesterday we saw a back and forth, uh, or fought and back from the GTA and mm. the, uh, what do you call it, the Ministry of Tourism and 
we're, we're wondering what exactly is happening. One by the GTA, and uh, there are two statements. So yeah. maybe I'll quickly read um, what the statements have said, and then we can quickly look at it from that perspective. The, the GTA had earlier announced that drinking bars can open, and later in the evening we had the ministry say, well, no, you cannot open. So this is a letter authored from the Ghana Tourism Authority. It says, directives for hospitality sector, May 11 to 31, 2020. Following the president's directive to the nation on Sunday, 10th May 2020, the Ghana Tourism Authority, under the auspices of the Ministry of Arts, uh, Tourism, Arts and Culture, issues the following guidelines for the hospitality industry. One, all hotels can operate as normal and host their guests subject to specified elevated hygiene protocols and social distancing. Two, food chains and restaurants can operate sit in sit down as well as pickups and delivery services while observing appropriate social distancing and hygiene protocols three all nightclubs must remain closed four drinking bars can operate while observing appropriate social distancing and hygiene protocols five in all situations hospitality uh, facilities should observe the staff management and workplace protocols and precautionary measures on public gatherings with a view of achieving social distancing and hygiene protocols are spelled out on the impositions of restrictions coronavirus disease pandemic instrument 2020 ei 64 and they would make reference to uh they, they would they would make reference to uh what do you call it um clause four of that particular law i'm looking for the uh what do you call it the rebuttal or if you like the nullification of that what I just read to you by the uh, GTA, uh, and uh, this is, uh, no, forgive me, okay, mm. let me find it, I found it. Okay, uh, it says that directives for hospitality sector, May 11 to 31st uh, of May 2020, from the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture. Here's what it reads. It says, the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture has taken note of the circular issued by the Ghana Tourism Authority and captioned as above. The ministry wishes to clarify the directives as follows. One, food chains and restaurants, including hotel restaurants, can operate takeout and delivery services only. Two, drinking bars remain closed. Three, all nightclubs remain closed. The public is to note that the circular supersedes the one issued by the regulator, signed by Honorable Barbara Otin JC MP, and minister for the that sector she's also a lawyer by the way richard what's happening uh, mm. i thought that the agency or the regulator would have spoken to the ministry they would be singing one song but uh, they speak and then the ministry says forget about it wow. they don't know what they're talking about mm. literally mm. well uh, good morning uh, to you again uh, to amalaba and uh, to your uh, very cherished viewers mm. um, I, I think it's a, just a case, a case of a uh, uh, ministry trying to be cautious. I think it's within the domain of the authority to want to uh, try to ease uh, the measures to ensure that economic activity mm -hmm. returns. Uh, but the ministry uh, has an express uh, uh, responsibility uh, representing the president in that sector to ensure mm -hmm. that the decisions within that space mm -hmm. uh, reflect the the overall approach mm -hmm. uh, by the president and government to try to address mm -hmm. uh, the menace of uh, COVID-19. So mm -hmm. I, I think that uh, what's happened is, is as it should be expected. It's, it's not uh, out of the, the norm. Mm -hmm. uh, the key is people trying to be very cautious. Uh, we are not out of the woods yet. Uh, there's a lot that we need to keep an eye on, mm -hmm. uh, which is the reason why um, uh, that we are trying to, to wear these masks and, mm -hmm. and speak, even though it's not the best experience. Right. So I, I see that as an occasion where uh, some uh, directives have been issued by looking at it again. Uh, there seemed to be something concerning about it. I see clearly, I mean, opening uh, drinking bars mm. with whatever elevated safety protocols you put in place. When people get, uh, you know, a little bit tipsy, mm. 
uh, indiscretion. Uh, all those things get thrown out of the window. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't somebody who is drunk and uh, you know wearing his can't mask. Advise a drunk yeah, man. you can't. You can't advise. So I think it's proper uh, taking a second look at it uh, that the minister uh, had that retracted. I think it was just a normal thing. It could have just been the authority writing to say we pull that back. Mm -hmm. The ministry writing. Uh, you know, her orders supersedes what the authority issues. So it's just in, in order. Could have done it any number of ways. Some say there's power play, and for example, that this whole uh, our decisions are backed by science and data. Mm -hmm. It didn't come to play in this particular instance. No, but you see, when when you look, you see the authority. First, is there power play? No, I don't think so. Okay, think was this that, backed by science and data? Now, now here's the thing: <clears throat> if you look the world over. What the, the authority announced yesterday is being done mm -hmm. the world over. And so as an authority that is working, notes its mandate, and is looking at what uh, colleague authorities are doing mm -hmm. around the world, mm -hmm. opening up gradually and ensuring that measures are put in place to you know, mitigate you know, the spread of the virus, mm -hmm. but allowing economic activity to come back, allowing people to get back to normal life, mm -hmm. is something that has been done all over the world. And certainly, the authority has the mandate to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the supervisor, if you like, uh, which is the ministry, mm -hmm. uh, which has responsibility for policy mm -hmm. and, and guidance, uh, sees that maybe that measure mm -hmm. may be in good advice or maybe a good advice going forward. But then given the general frame of things, mm -hmm. probably may have, may have been a step too early. Mm -hmm. And so let's pull that one back and then now revise where we are going forward and then proceed gradually. What, what do you say to those who say this marks of indecision in the management of, uh, of, uh, of our situation? Because yesterday, we had a lot of people call, hmm. uh, I mean, I, I would say me, hmm. from the Ghana Bar Association, not, hmm. the, the, not Amalibar's Bar Association, yeah. Bar Operators <laughs> Association. <laughs> well, it's you, good for clarification. Yeah, you know, it's, it's good for me to say so. The yeah. Ghana uh, Bar Operators Association. Bar Operators, okay. Yes, that's yeah. it. Yeah. The, I had calls that they were, they were in a jubilant mood. Yeah. And then by 7 p.m., snap. Yeah. They yeah. can't operate. Yeah, I think, I think uh, uh, two things. Uh, not indecision, because if you look at, uh, if you look at the situation with uh, COVID-19, mm. the situation is very fluid the world over. It's a very fluid situation. Mm -hmm. So there is no cut and dry solution and say, this is it, this is a silver bullet, let's go for it, no. Mm -hmm. Even recently, I think as of yesterday, Germany was uh, re-tightening mm -hmm. uh, back their, their restrictions. Mm -hmm. They started lifting them and then their case uh, count tripled. Mm -hmm. uh, in one day, about 933 cases, mm -hmm. when they thought they had plateaued and was, was dipping. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, it's sort of a question of indiscipline. It's a question of keeping your eye on the ball. Mm -hmm. And so when you, you kept your eye on the ball and you saw that uh, your authority has issued uh, a measure, which it is in their domain mm -hmm. to do, and, and then you see that, okay, maybe this may be a stretch too far. Let's roll this back. Mm -hmm. And like we're saying, you can't advise uh, a drunken person uh, to be socially distancing and, uh, or should be in a position where they are wearing their masks mm -hmm. or they are doing certain things that under normal circumstances they will do without your advice. Okay. So if you look at that and you assess it vis-a-vis -vis what situation we're in, I, think, I don't think it's indecision. You always need to be cautious and double check. So mm -hmm. that, I think that given the German example, the, the, you cannot say it's indecision. It's a question of people being careful, people being cautious, keeping their eye on the ball. Which of the two decisions were not backed by science and data? I'm not sure. Uh, the GTA wrote a statement initially yeah. saying bars can open. The minister says bars cannot open. No, I just I just shown you. This is not a question of science or data. I'm just but telling. But what the government says. The government says we're operating by science and data. You are taking that out of context. No, I'm not. You are taking out of context. I'm not. No, you are. Yeah, I, I how, just okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so let, let's make the point. Hmm. If you have doubt that that decision can be made and reversed, whether science or no science. Are you going to tell me that the German government is also not operating based on science or data, or they were wrong in having to the track The German back? government has not publicly said that they are operating by science and data. You are the ones who are saying they are operating by science and data. That, that, is, that is a very small nitpicking point. So let's leave that aside. Is it? The, yes. The point I am saying is that if the German government, mm -hmm. who without saying you will assume 
is operating based on science. You will assume that, or you don't think they are operating based I on science. I don't know what's informing their decision. Okay. It's a science. Okay. It's the same science. Okay. okay. You are assuming for them. Oh, unless you think otherwise. No, I don't know. Me, okay, I don't know well, I, I, my, that's my assumption. Mm -hmm. That is based on science. Mm -hmm. And if they, based on science, can retract from what positions they have reached, opening up their bars, opening up this, and then suddenly their case count is going up, and they say, no, let's go back and tighten stuff. It tells you that this thing, it's a question of keeping your eye on the ball, mm -hmm. and the situation is fluid. So it's not a question of somebody did this or somebody that is be about. Actually, it should be evidence that people are on the job and are paying attention. They, they, and they're all interest mm. of trying to protect. Mm. Uh, uh, the, the Finally, Ghanians. to you, I'll go to Malba shortly. The government says that, look, people, the economic equation is also being looked at. Yeah. People need to feed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bartenders, um, waiters, waitresses, all of them that work within that. Uh, drinking bar sector, the nightclubs, say, look, we have been home for all this while. We don't have what to eat. Mm. And we thought that you were coming to give us hope. Only mm. for you to say, and I, w I won't subscribe to opening up the bars, by yeah, the sure, way. Sure, sure. But how do we su support them economically mm. to survive? Mm. That's the question they're asking now. Yeah. Well, mm. that, that's a conversation we can have. And, and that is separate from the order that was issued and then retracted. So that's a separate conversation. If you want us to have that, I guess you can have it um, later on. But right now, what you is brought... There, is there hope for them? Is there help for them? Well, there, there's a number of things that has been done. I mean, the, the issue in government is done uh, considerably well with mm. measures to mitigate the impact. Mm -hmm. Now, ultimately, uh, more needs to be done. And this is a system-wide uh, approach. You just saw you and, you, yourself and I mm. was, were discussing here uh, the last time about uh, some 200,000 companies mm -hmm. that have been given some um, uh, capital or injection of capital mm -hmm. to continue their business. Uh, ultimately, the economy will come back and more will be done. So yeah, yeah, more is being done. receiving that anyway, I checked. Yeah, I mean, but then so it's, a the it's a process. It's a process. Yes, of course, of course. Two, you two, host two. them here. Yes, okay, yeah, yeah, please push, push that mm -hmm. and let's see how they are doing that fast. And let's not get to, uh, to the point where we say, oh, they are not all over the world. Systems are not working the way they were working normally. Even in America, when they had to issue these uh, uh, business support funds, okay. it took a long time. I don't know if it's been regularized, but mm. it's a process. Okay. Let's be supportive. Let's get them to, to, uh, to, to do their work. And whatever we can also do to contribute, let's be willing to do it. It's not a time to criticize. It's not a time to pick on people. It's mm. time to share ideas. It's time to work together. Mm. It's time to work as a team. Also. Yes. Uh, um, Richard says this is a mark of people staying awake on the job and watching the job done. Um, some have said it is this back and forth, power play, damage control. What do you see from where you sit? Has reason tenable? So let me also say good morning to your viewers. Besides what you have just said, he has also indicated it is normal. This cannot be normal. This is a clear case of confusion. Really? And it is a display of how uncoordinated our fight against COVID-19 is. One would have expected that once these two institutions or two organizations, if you want it, belong to the same umbrella, mm -hmm. it's not like we are talking about Ministry of Agri and the Ministry of Health, you say they are cross capital. This is within the same structure. Mm -hmm. One is a supervisor over, over the other. I am sure in this organization, you clear things with your superior before you go out there. You clear things. So why won't the Ghana Tourism Authority, which is under the ministry, mm. clear this very important issue mm. with the minister? You are assuming they didn't clear. That's what you are doing. You are assuming. What if they did? So it buttresses my point of confusion. If they did, and the minister then came back to say, halt it, that is a confusion. I'm saying that it's a clear case of confusion. 
and the uncoordinated way of fighting the pandemic. You can't use one situation to say it's Now, look, in a very serious um, country, not the one that we are observing under Kufado, in the very serious country, some of the relaxations would have been informed by science, apart from what you have said, but to be more specific, you would have had to hear from the, uh, you would have had the Ministry of Health mm -hmm. or the Ghana Health Service indicating that where we have gotten to, bars can now open. Where we have gotten to, we can start going to the sports stadium. Where we have gotten to, we can start opening schools. Is that what the GTA saw before it says? I am saying that it is not GTA. It must be guided by the appropriate ministry or mm -hmm. agency that has the information. Mm -hmm. That is what, what serious countries do, not in the haphazard manner in which this administration is treating the, 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 the fight against the pandemic. Look, as at uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. I think uh, when the information came out that people can begin to go to the uh, drinking bars and all those mm -hmm. things. Then I heard uh, a virologist mm -hmm. say that this is a recipe for disaster. He said it. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, we know that some of the epic centers mm -hmm. for this uh, uh, pandemic are places where people congregate. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, I am told market areas. <clears throat> I am told uh, 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 bar stations or trotro stations, or if you want, uh, 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 our stations. Mm. Now, you want to add beer bars to it, and you think that this is not confusion within the government's uh, own fight against uh, COVID-19? It is an indictment. It's not fair to say the government is confused. It is an indictment. It's not fair to say the government is confused. It's an indictment. This is my words. Let the government uh, uh, come here. He's here. You are not government. So if you begin to see the fourth and uh, uh, the, 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 the way this um, <coughs> pandemic is being fought, and then you narrow it to what happened yesterday mm. between the Ghana Tourism Authority and the Minister of Tourism, mm. you cannot but come to a firm conclusion that the government is finding it difficult to deal with the fight against the pandemic. Relaxation of restrictions are guided by the, 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 the science. Mm. They are also being informed by advice coming from the appropriate agency Ghana Tourism Authority is nowhere near the fight against COVID-19. But if they take a decision and they recognize that, look, we didn't take a, a good decision, can we, we are backtracked and we are right on the right, or we are on the right path, what's wrong with it? No. There's always a certain expectation of government and its agencies. You, me, may get it wrong. But government, with all the resources available to it, with all the experts available to it, cannot be seen doing these mistakes. Government. Government. That has, uh, at the moment, there's a, an advisor in the flags of the flags of ICC. I'm pointing there. It's here. There's an, a, 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 an advisor mm. called uh, Dr. Nsiasari okay. in the flags of house. You and me don't have that. So you and me can be uh, uh, excused if we falter. Government cannot be seen engaging in releasing a statement saying that you can all go. Mm -hmm. And when they did that, the Bar Operators Association members were excited. Right. Because to be honest with you, it is becoming difficult for them. And so you had, you had, you had by this publication by the Ghana Tourism Authority, had heightened their expectation, then all of a sudden, mm. you dampen it with another statement. So I think that, look, 
it is I, I'm, a I'm just reading. Of, I'm just reading. Uh, sorry about that. I'm just reading a notice from one of the uh, executives of the the bar operators, not mm -hmm. the Ghana Bar Association. Mm -hmm. He says, "Good morning, boss. We are back to the lockdown, and the tension is mounting in the industry. There are attempts to go on a demonstration. Seriously, they are playing politics with our industry because of the churches. This is what they think. So you see, where they have taken the matter to, they are now going to demonstrate." If this confusion hadn't come, they were not thinking about this. But because probably they were given assurances, and I'm sure before this would have happened, the, the Ghana Tourism Authority would have had contact with stakeholders and had assured them, only for them to be told that, no, you can't go. And that, for me, is confusion in the camp of the government and its fight against COVID-19. The, he the health of the people are, is most important. Nobody is saying no. So if the government takes a decision no, I am and says that, look, I, 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 I won't do it again. I, I'm going back to the old decision. That's laudable. In the first place, why did the government even decide that it was going to announce for the lifting of the restrictions against uh, 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 the, the, the beer bar presentation? Why? What informed that? Look, I am not saying that the reversal is not good. Mm. In the first place, we didn't even need to announce that we are lifting it for them to even be having some expectation of going back. And now that they are saying they are going to demonstrate. Look, let's eat the humble pie. Government, the two agencies, the ministry and the Ghana Tourism mm. Association, aired. Mm. They failed the operators of this bar association. Mm. They must come and apologize to them. Lifting the ban at this time was not appropriate. Okay. But for a, a government agency to make an announcement mm. without being informed by agencies responsible for the fight against the COVID, I don't think that this was... Uh, 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 this decision to lift mm -hmm. the, the ban was informed by the uh, Minister of Health okay. or it was informed by the Ghana Health Service. Mm. And so that confusion they created, they have a responsibility to come and apologize. Eat the humble pie, apologize and we'll move on. Okay. But to behave as if you have rather done this country a lot of good by reversing the decision, I'm saying in the first place, you had no right to go lifting the restriction when you have not been informed that we can begin to relax okay. to those restrictions. Uh, uh, Richard, yeah. stepping for me now, the other school of thought is that, okay, government has given 50% uh, free electricity mm -hmm. to uh, people above the lifeline. Mm -hmm. That would include some of these um, uh, businesses. businesses yeah. Now, they are getting free water. But if you listen to the, the unison that they've been singing, it's that... We are not benefiting from the free bees because we are not operating at our capacity. We are doing 5 to 10%. People have been asked to go home. Guests are not coming in. Our bars are locked. Our nightclubs are locked. Our guest houses are closed. So the free water and free electricity means nothing to us. Mm. Now, the school of thought is that government then decides to open this up so a lot more people can benefit from it, mm -hmm. and then they can sing the praise of government. Is that truism to that? Um, well, I mean, there's always the perfect situation, uh, but we know that that is always, as a matter of life, aspirational. Mm. Uh, we can never arrive there. We've never arrived there, at least in history. But I'll, I want to do two things uh, so that we put this situa uh, discussion in context. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, what uh, Amalaba is saying is free from constraint of responsibility, mm. so he can speak free. Okay, when he had responsibility and his government to manage this country, they did things as elemental as writing the name of the president mm. Mm, of this country as Uhuru Kenyatta. You will, that is, hold on, hold on. You, you hold on. repeat that with no. the Ghana Beyond Aid hold on, hold on, uh, hold on. document. That, that Johnny, Johnny, just allow me. Just, just allow me. Just the year allow, of return. Just allow me. Mm. Allow me. I'm making a point. The year I'm not, of return. Hold on. Allow him. I'm making a point mm. just to illustrate what he's saying. 
Okay, mm. he's posturing as if mistake he they or he is beyond mistake, okay. and that's the the, mm. the, 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 mm. the thrust of my point. That he's saying that you have all the resources. Exactly, mm. that uh, a ministry can do this, a ministry can do this, and they are under the same things, not cross carpeting and the rest. The same Jubilee House, mm. they wrote a speech. They cannot remember the name of the president of Ghana. That's very elemental. Mm. So it tells you his defense will be. Human, uh, human, you know, we are humans and we make mistakes. Mm. He, where he comes from, and why today he's speaking as though he's free from making mistakes or these kinds of things never happened. They are the same people who inherited a functioning economy, mm. and by the, turn, uh, by the time they were getting ready to leave, they, they vanquished the economy. So this is the person who is talking today. My, my so we question, need my to know. Is about no, I'll answer your question, years. Johnny. Okay. I'll answer your question. Mm. So I wanted to put in context okay. who is talking right. and castigating. Okay. You understand? Mm. Now, the the question of the uh, the bar association, uh, sorry, the, the bar operators industry generally. Yes, yes, that they are not enjoying the freebies if because you, they are not if operating you, at capacity. Uh, uh, so freebies in respect to the water, electricity. electricity. Yes, but right. I think the thing before you are a business, you are an individual. Okay. okay. Before they open their bars, they they enjoy electricity in their home. Mm. So that is part of the free. Mm. You use the water at home. That's part of the free. Mm. Now we agree that when, when, as a business, that's where they make income, mm -hmm. and the world over. Mm -hmm. That hospitality sector mm -hmm. is suffering. You understand? Mm -hmm. So what I will advise, rather than engaging in demo, uh, demonstrations and the rest, mm -hmm. my personal belief, demonstration never solves any problem. Dialogue solves problems, so they must engage. Mm -hmm. Even if uh, you know, uh, um, organizations such as the uh, GFA mm -hmm. and the rest of them are going to government to say, we need this, we need this, can we engage to find this and that? There is always constructive uh, uh, debates or discussions to be had to find solutions. Issuing statements and things about demonstration only feed into the political environment, mm. but it doesn't attend to the human need that is present. That must be attended okay. to through dialogue. Now, now respond to the, the, whether or not there's truism to the fact that the industry players say the free water, free electricity means next to nothing to them and which is why government is opening them up so that, was thinking of opening them up so that they could all enjoy and be country singers of the government. Is there truism to it? No, that's nothing. I mean, I just showed you how they are benefiting. Mm. They are benefiting their homes. So whether or not they run their business, uh, uh, but that would be an additional benefit to them. But mm. essentially, the reason for which the benefit was given as mm. Ghanaians, they are getting it. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is that the world over, this is a challenge. Mm. It, it's, it's an evolving situation. Mm. But what can help us solve this problem is dialogue. Okay. And I, I don't think that demonstration solves anything. Mm. Demonstration always, only in my view, animate the political space. Okay. That is the only capital they are going to get out of it. Mm. Oh, we are demonstrating. But by the way, the world over, we are living in uncertain times. Mm. This is not a government-created crisis. Mm -hmm. This is not a government-created problem. Mm. And the challenges they are facing as, a, as, an, as, as an industry, mm -hmm. it is not peculiar to Ghana. It is the world over. Mm. So maybe they can engage and say, okay, well, this is what we see. Mm. Uh, you know, our industry in other countries are doing. Can we engage okay. to see if so, this will work? So, here? bottom line so is engagement. The bottom mm -hmm. line is that let's become citizens who are engaged in finding solution to a problem mm -hmm. that is unknown to us with a leadership that says, I will prioritize the welfare of your life ahead of, 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 okay. of the economy. So, let's do that. Thank you. Because Thank that's you. how we're going Thank to you. go forward. Together. Council, so, the, I'll ask you the same question I did the 50, the free electricity and free water that the industry, some, the industry says they are not getting it. So the theory is that, a school of thought is that we are opening this up so a lot more people can benefit. Richard says that is not true, but also the fact that going on a demonstration will be overstretching it. And so the bar association, as I, oh, the bar operators association, I beg your pardon. <laughs> Let's just agree. No, it's not the bar association, <laughs> I beg you. I don't want to be put before a court. What about your thoughts? You see, the, this government, has a very big problem. You know, they would come, and for that matter, the president, make promises before the people get down to work. That's the technocrats. Get down to work to try to, to, to implement what the, the president has said. 
And so most of these promises, and I saw people jubilating, and I told mm -hmm. them that, hey, hold on. The problem about this government is not the lack of promises. Mm -hmm. They always have promises. So for this government, you can, if you read them, they are the highest in the, in, on the league of promises. But the implementation. You are enjoying free water mm -hmm. and electricity. And I'm telling you that people are just telling you that they are not enjoying those things. No. In fact, explain. In fact, because their businesses are shut. Yes. In fact, Please. no, no. Even even the, the <laughs> domestic. Wait, 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 wait. I saw people on television saying that the reduction has not reflected in their in their in their uh, bill. But how about you? That. Are you getting it or not? Look, I am. Are you? I am not interested because. No, no, I, you say. I am not interested because. Look, let me tell you. <laughs> I was. I, I heard the. The, mini, the government saying that if you had one of those sell uh, buying with a card, you should mm -hmm. go and swipe it, and then you should go and uh, fix it in before you go and buy. I did not do that. Me, when I go, they kick it, get, it goes in straight. Yeah. And but I don't but see, did you get? And the I don't see anything. I don't. You are not getting the benefit. I don't. I don't see anything. I don't even care because for me, okay. what is important is for me to be able to protect my family from this COVID. Those things. <laughs> I don't believe in So those. you don't, don't care about that. I don't, I don't believe you in don't care so about see, that. Let me come back. Ra so the government, the so government will make those promises mm. without consulting the <laughs> experts, mm. the technocrats. Now, when they do that, they will now leave the experts and technocrats to be scrambling to implement or bring guidelines to implement these things. Mm. That is the bane of this government. So if today you are hearing people saying that, they are not benefiting. It's because of this lackluster approach. No. But, but the businesses really? are closed. How can no. they be I'm saying I've even told you how individuals eh, mm. are not benefiting from this 50 and then uh, 50 that is percent, not true. Uh, in the, in the, in the water and uh, it's not uh, true. water please, and then please, electricity. Please, please. Indeed. Well, I am benefiting. That is not true. So I, I can only yes, say. Yes, but I have seen people on telly saying that they have, it has not reflected. Right. I saw it. Right. There are some like that. Yes. So you mm. stop it. Stop but, it. No, stop it. Let me finish. Richard, allow him. Let me finish. Stop it. It's a serious matter. You can't be deceiving the people. But Johnny just told me he's benefiting. You've so not built one. You've Richard, not, allow him. Allow him. You've not built one hospital, and yet our hospitals, but, but let's, let's our buildings are the let's, ones let's dealing with hospitals. this COVID. And you sit there and say that we run the economy down. How let, do you run the economy let's, down? Let's look at. Let's look at. How uh, do you run the economy let's down? Let's look at Amidu and uh, the. We the are those who build the hospitals. <laughs> Thank you. Let's have you built one? Yeah, Hankoop. Let's look at Amidu and the eligibility to practice as a special prosecutor. Yesterday, the. Uh, by a 5-4 decision, the Supreme Court ruled that his age is uh, eligible. I I'm thinking the reasons will be given today um, at the court registry. So mm -hmm. I have not seen the reasons. But here's what I think. Does this set the precedent for people who are above 60, 65, maybe 70, to come into public service and, and stay there while the younger population do not have jobs to do? What, does, what precedence does this set? Because mind you, when the Supreme Court gets a ruling, it becomes some form of law. I'm yes, law. Correct me. Now, what does this say to you as a young man like me? Yeah. Well, I thought you have the lawyer have a crack at it. But, you know... Okay, so let, let, yeah. let, let me defer to counsel first. Counsel, I thought that he had just finished speaking. So, yeah. counsel, let me defer to you. What do you see looking into your legal crystal ball? <laughs> you see, yesterday, Dr. Dominic Ayene, when he was asked, said he was surprised at the ruling. But I will say that I was shocked at the ruling. Why were you shocked? I was shocked because, for me, this matter was a straightforward matter. And the Constitution is our guide. Mm -hmm. If you read Article 190, mm -hmm. it lists all the public services in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And goes further to say that, so, the last one, that is 191D, mm -hmm. says that such other public services, after the listing, mm -hmm. then it says that such other public services as parliament may by law prescribe. Mm -hmm. And we all know that the special prosecutor's uh, office was created, was a creation of uh, law mm -hmm. and was created by parliament. The, right. act, of, the act was uh, passed by parliament. Yeah. So that brings it into the ambit of a public office. Mm. Now, if you 
proceed to 199 mm -hmm. of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Article 199 will tell you this. And with your permission, it right. says. It says, and I'm reading 1991. A public officer shall, except as otherwise provided in the Constitution, mm -hmm. retire from the public service on attaining the age of 60 years. All right. So, because this is very clear, mm -hmm. I was shocked mm -hmm. at the 5 2 majority decision of the Supreme Court because a similar matter was adjudicated by the Supreme Court in the Dua Ajima case. Mm -hmm. He was then Auditor General. And his argument was that because his office was equated to the Court of Appeal judge, mm -hmm. it means that because Court of Appeal judges go on retirement at 70, right. he also go on service. And they told him, no, no, no. It is your condition of service. Mm -hmm. It is your remuneration mm. that is paid at that at level. Same level. Okay. But the age, no, you still have to go at 60. Okay. There are three types of public servants. Mm. There are those appointed ministers that are public service. Mm. That's not the people we are talking about. There are career civil servants mm. who would go through the system. And they will retire at 60. They will retire at 60. Okay. And there are those who are on contract and mm. they will be... Uh, contracts, they, they are like independent Re contractors. Renewable. Mm -hmm. Then there is those who, after turning 60, it can be renewed twice. Okay. Another two years for another two years. Because of their expertise. Because of their expertise. That, that's normally what happens with the, of late, with mm -hmm. the, with the, uh, our IGPs. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Now, in Martin Amidu's case, mm -hmm. he was 66. Or is it 65? 65, 65 at the time of at his the time, appointment. Exactly. Right? 65. And that was way above the mandatory 60, that is a 60 year age, mm. and was even above the, 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 the renewable age. Mm -hmm. If you were even going to be renewed two years, another two years, that would have made you 64. As you have indicated, I am waiting with bated breath to understand whether. The Supreme Court, like you said, when, mm. they, when they speak, it's law. Mm. Whether the Supreme Court is going to create another category of public servants mm. by their ruling. Okay. If they are going to create another category, we wait to see. What, what, what would that mean? The implications? If they, if they no, there's good reason for why they peg the age at 60 years. Mm -hmm. There's good reason. The framers of the Constitution... I'm told it was even 55, and mm. then they had to increase it to 60. Mm. And there's good reason for that, because look, as you attain 60, you need to give way mm -hmm. for young ones to take over, you know. And so, in this era of unemployment too, mm. you would have thought that this uh, restriction of 60 years mm, would have been adhered strictly. Mm. So that to give room for young ones to also come into the system. What is going to happen is that unless they are able to distinguish that this is not applicable to the entire public service, mm. then we may breathe a huge sigh of relief. Mm. But if the ruling comes today mm -hmm. and it's applicable to the entire public service, it's going to be a disaster because then we'll have backlog of people who will be wanting to enter into the public service. Mm. But because somebody's at 60 and this uh, ruling says that he can even go beyond 60, mm. then there's going to be some chaos at the, at the, at the, at the, at the roots. <sighs> we are waiting to see. Mm. I am thinking that they will try to create another mm. category. Mm. Which category will say that, look, this is like a special purpose vehicle. Mm -hmm. And so as a special purpose vehicle um, is to fight corruption. Mm. Just to deal with a particular canker. Mm. And so based on that, we can insulate mm. that office mm. and, not, and not allow 
the above 60 years mm. to apply to the public. In fact, that's what the AG said. He says that also it was uh, his case that it will be unconstitutional to place a limit on a person exercising prosecutorial powers when the constitution had made no such provision. It submitted further that to place the constraints of age on a person who exercises prosecutorial powers when the constitution had not specifically provided for sin is plainly untenable. That was uh, Godfrey Dummy's uh, thing. It further submitted that per Act 959, the law establishes the office of the special prosecutor. Parliament had provided the tenure of the special prosecutor as a seven-year non-renewable term. And uh, that, those were his arguments. But Isaac. this argument will not fly because even the judges, mm. the judges, their age, their retirement age is provided in the constitution. Absolutely. Let alone a prosecutor, judges, their age is even provided that they should. That's 70. 70. Mm. For the superior the court, uh, the, like say court of appeal, and then and the, the Supreme, Supreme Court, court. Mm. then 60, 65 for the, uh, the, the lower. The uh, yes, so this will not fly for me mm. because even the one who is sitting and determining the case yesterday, his age has been categorically stated. Mm. Uh -huh. So, and if you see the creation of uh, the, the special prosecutor. Mm. Clearly, it falls under Article 190, which is a public office. Right. Then also, we have heard Article 199 saying that mm. a public office holder or a, a, a public office, a public servant, mm. would retire at 60. And so that is where the conundrum is. We wait to see, and let's all wait to see mm. what the Supreme Court will say today. Okay. <coughs> Richard, are, are we creating employment for older people and... Uh, uh, taking younger people or keeping them at bay. That's, that's the crux of Amalba's uh, conversation, if I understood it. I, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't think that's what he's saying, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's what uh, uh, he's trying to, the impression he's trying to create. But mm. you see, I'm not a lawyer. And so I would talk to you b briefly from a layman common sense standpoint. Mm. Uh, you see, when, when courts rules like this mm -hmm. and their law, uh, their ruling becomes law in, sen in essence being a uh, precedent mm -hmm. that can be appealed to, mm -hmm. um, it is not only the majority decision or majority opinion that becomes the precedent, mm -hmm. even the dissent is precedent mm -hmm. in of itself. So if you look at it from that standpoint, uh, it is comforting to know that there will be counter views, the argument to be presented, why is it and why is it not? Mm. But I, I don't think mm. that this has created any uh, room or mm. uh, attempt to encourage uh, uh, an act that is mm. unacceptable. If there's any precedent created, it will be specific to the office of the special prosecutor. Mm. So therefore, maybe uh, in Nanado's second term, if uh, Mr. Martin Amidu is not there or somebody has to be appointed. They can still appoint somebody over the age of 60-something mm -hmm. based on the person's expertise to be able to do the job. He can mm -hmm. say that and then it will not be taken to court again. Okay. So that space is created. But the idea that it would open the floodgate for people over 60 and all that mm -hmm. as if they are just out there to want to do this, mm -hmm. I don't think that it will do it would open that possibility. But for me, it is an exercise that I think uh, was worth it. Mm. And the ruling has settled some doubts. Um, if possible, uh, what it proves to me is that uh, our system works mm -hmm. and we should encourage people to use the system. Okay. Um, and when that has happened, there mm -hmm. is peace. Thank the you. only thing I don't encourage, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, what uh, I think myself and my brother discussed yesterday, is when rulings like this come, then we we'll try to find avenues to invalidate it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't settle the well, case. Well, the I, Supreme I have Court, not, I have not the seen Supreme the reasons. So, which yeah, is yeah of course, of course. I'm, I'm saying, in, in, I am saying mm -hmm. what the reasons will come. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying that on face of it, you can see the, the rationale for you know, voting in that direction. Mm -hmm. But the point of it is that the Supreme Court settles the argument. Mm -hmm. And so let's, let's move on well, with the it. The Supreme Court can always review its own decision. Yes. I agree. Yes. But, but then yeah. until the review, mm -hmm. the issue is settled. Right. You see, there's nothing we, wrong. We have to go. Yeah, we have to go. There's nothing wrong with people criticizing judgments. Mm -hmm. That is allowed. But you cannot attack the persons of the judges. Right the personalities. Mm. You cannot uh, insinuate 
any wrongdoing on their part. But you can, the merit of the matter. Yes, but you can attack and exactly. criticize the judgment. Mm -hmm. okay. And president is leaning towards the majority decision, not the. But but I'm only but I'm only telling so you it's not, it's not that, a no no no. Okay. But the dissent, the no no please. But the dissent is also precedent. You must agree. It's not. That's, mm -hmm. Okay, it's precedent. No, if you don't not. agree, okay, it's not. Uh, it's precedent. Is the, yes, the majority decision? I agree, is, but I'm saying so that so means the that, dissent means that is also on the books seven, seven and judges, is appealed to. Seven judges, uh, okay. seven uh, su uh, uh, Supreme Court judges sat on this. Mm. If if there's a review, it mm. means that nine people. They may add two, two, okay, to make it nine, okay. Mm. But you look at your chances, but. However, to you look at, there must be grievous error of, of law okay. before you can be allowed to, to, to review. Okay. Apart from that, you look at your chances. Mm. If they add two, you already have two. So Dominica Union has two. Okay. If they add two, if the two add to him, okay. it will still be 5-4. Five so, four. Five four. so you, there, there's mathematics there too. Okay, thank you. Mm. Lawyer Abraham Malba, grateful for your legal uh, edification, I must say, yeah. this morning. And uh, he's a member of the NDC's legal and communication team. And also, Richard Ahiagba is the executive director of the Dankwa Institute. They've been my guest this morning.